The term power grid frequency, also known as grid frequency, describes the rate at which an electrical grid's alternating current AC power supply changes the direction. Grid frequency, which is typically represented in hertz hertz, is a technical term that refers to the number of times the alternation cycle happens per second. Currently, 50 hertz is the common frequency utilized in the majority of the world's electricity systems. Accordingly, there are either 50 cycles per second, 2,400 cycles per minute, or one cycle every 20 milliseconds. Frequency refers to how often something occurs within a specific period. When you power up an appliance, like a kettle or laptop charger, it uses alternating current AC, which means the current alternates between positive and negative voltage. This back and forth movement, or oscillation, is termed electrical frequency. AC oscillates 50 times per second, resulting in a frequency of 50 Hz 50 Hz. Take an example of UK or India appliances and electrical equipment are designed for 50 Hz. If the frequency deviates from this, the appliances won't function correctly due to the narrow tolerance. Hence, maintaining a frequency close to 50 Hz is essential. Monitoring the frequency across the electricity network is crucial to ensure it stays near 50 or 60 Hz. Changes in supply and demand impact frequency and excess demand drops the frequency, while an excess supply raises it. We are required to keep the frequency within 0.5 Hz of 50 Hz, but we aim for a tighter operational target of 0.2 Hz. The primary reason for accurate frequency control is to allow the flow of alternating current power from multiple generators through the network to be controlled. The trend in system frequency is a measure of mismatch between demand and generation, and so is a necessary parameter for load control in interconnected systems. Frequency of the system will vary as load and generation change. Increasing the mechanical input power to a synchronous generator will not greatly affect the system frequency, but will produce more electric power from that unit. During a severe overload caused by tripping or failure of generators or transmission lines the power system frequency will decline, due to an imbalance of load versus generation. Loss of an interconnection, while exporting power relative to system total generation will cause system frequency to rise. Automatic Generation Control AGC is used to maintain scheduled frequency and interchange power flows. Control systems in power plants detect changes in the network-wide frequency and adjust mechanical power input to generators back to their target frequency. This counteracting usually takes a few tens of seconds due to the large rotating masses involved. Temporary frequency changes are an unav unavoidable consequence of changing demand. Exceptional or rapidly changing mains frequency is often a sign that an electricity distribution network is operating near its capacity limits, dramatic examples of which can sometimes be observed shortly before major outages. Frequency protective relays on the power system network sense the decline of frequency and automatically initiate load shedding or tripping of interconnection lines to preserve the operation of at least part of the network. Small frequency deviations, i.e. 0.5 Hz on a 50 Hz or 60 Hz network will result in automatic load shedding or other control actions to restore system frequency. Smaller power systems, not extensively interconnected with many generators and loads, will not maintain frequency with the same degree of accuracy. Where system frequency is not tightly regulated during heavy load periods, the system operators may allow system frequency to rise during periods of light load to maintain a daily average frequency of acceptable accuracy. The first applications of commercial electric power were incandescent lighting normal bulb and commutator type electric motors. Motors. Both devices operate well on DC, but DC could not be easily changed in voltage and was generally only produced at the required utilization voltage. If an incandescent lamp is operated on a low frequency current, the filament cools on each half cycle of the alternating current, leading to perceptible change in brightness and flicker of the lamps. Commutator type motors do not operate well on high frequency AC because the rapid changes of current are opposed by the inductance of the motor field, even today. Although commutator type universal motors are common in 50 Hz and 60 Hz household appliances, 
They are small motors, less than one kilowatt. The induction motor was found to work well on frequencies around 50 to 60 hertz, but with the materials available in the 1890s would not work well at a frequency of, say, 133 hertz. There is a fixed relationship between the number of magnetic poles in the induction motor field, the frequency of the alternating current, and the rotation speed, so, a given standard speed limits the choice of frequency and the reverse. Once AC electric motors became common, it was important to standardize frequency for compatibility with the customer's equipment. Generators operated by slow speed reciprocating engines will produce lower frequencies for a given number of poles than those operated by, for example, a high speed steam turbine. For very slow prime mover speeds, it would be costly to build a generator with enough poles to provide a high AC frequency. As well, Synchronizing two generators to the same speed was found to be easier at lower speeds. While belt drives were common as a way to increase speed of slow engines, in very large ratings thousands of kilowatts these were expensive, inefficient, and unreliable. With AC, transformers can be used to step down high transmission voltages to lower customer utilization voltage. The transformer is effectively a voltage conversion device with no moving parts and requiring little maintenance. The use of AC eliminated the need for spinning DC voltage conversion motor generators that require regular maintenance and monitoring. Since, for a given power level, the dimensions of a transformer are roughly inversely proportional to frequency, a system with many transformers would be more economical at a higher frequency. Electric power transmission over long lines favors lower frequencies. The effects of the distributed capacitance and inductance of the line are less at low frequency. Generators can only be interconnected to operate in parallel if they are of the same frequency and wave shape. By standardizing the frequency used, generators in a geographic area can be interconnected in a grid, providing reliability and cost savings. An electric power system is characterized by two main important parameters, voltage and frequency. In order to keep the expected operating conditions and supply energy to all the user's loads connected, it is important to control these two parameters within predefined limits, to avoid unexpected disturbances that can create problems to the connected loads or even cause the system to fail. The most commonly used nominal frequency in power systems is 50 Hz Europe and most of Asia and 60 Hz North America. The reasons for this choice are based on technical compromises and historical situations. Generally, when the system operates in a range of frequency plus or minus 0.1 Hz, it is in the standard conditions, while when the frequency ranges from 47.5 to 51.5 Hz in 50 Hz network for example, it is called emergency condition or restoration condition. These values can change from country to country. Frequency variations in a power system occur because of an imbalance between generation and load. When the frequency value of a power system reaches the emergency condition, the control strategy is initiated. The frequency control is divided in three levels primary, secondary, and tertiary controls. Each frequency control has specific features and purposes. Primary control, the primary control or frequency response control is an automatic function and it is the fastest among the three levels, as its response period is a few seconds. When an imbalance between generation and load occurs, the frequency of the power system changes. For example, with a load increase, the generated power doesn't immediately change. So the energy to compensate for this load increase arrives from the kinetic energy of the rotating generators that start decreasing the velocity this is called the inertial response. After this moment, the speed controller called the governor of each generator acts to increase the generation power in order to recover this speed decreasing and try to clear the imbalance. Generally, in about 30 seconds, each generation unit shall be able to generate the required additional power and then keep it for at least 15 minutes. This timing depends on the requirements of the transmission system operator, or TSO. All the generation plants connected in the HV power system are called to supply this service, except the renewable energy source residential not schedulable i.e. wind, solar, biogas, hydraulic flow water, so... 
For this reason each generation unit shall have a dedicated and proper reserve power in order to accomplish this regulation when active. The purpose of the prim primary regulation is to clear the unbalance between generation and loads, in order to take the system to a stable condition. This service is mandatory for all the generators entitled to provide it and not remunerated. Regarding the not schedulable RES, these generators must be able to work with a defined PF function, in order to modulate their power according to the frequency value. This is easier in case of overfrequency, which requires power decrease. However, it could be really complex almost impossible in case of underfrequency, which would require a power increase, not always possible even with a reserve power due to the volatility of the primary resource itself. The continuous growth of residential implies the reduction of thermoelectric plants in operation, with consequent difficulties to perform this frequency regulation, for the reasons explained above. There are already different solution solutions under analysis and some of them already in place in several power systems battery energy storage systems are one of the most promising. This is one of the main challenges to the massive deployment of residential in the power systems. Secondary control, once the primary regulation accomplished its target, the frequency value it's different from the nominal one. The reserve margins of each generator have been used or partially used and also the power exchange between the interconnected power systems is different from the predefined one. So, it's necessary to restore the nominal value of the frequency, the reserve of each generator previously used, and the power exchange among the power systems. This is the purpose of the secondary control. In order to perform this task, there are some generators entitled to perform the secondary control through a dedicated reserve power. This reserve depends on the requirement of each TSO and usually, it's a percentage of the maximum power available, with a predefined minimum value to guarantee independently from the maximum power of each generator. If the frequency value is less than the nominal one, additional generation capacity needs to be started, while if the frequency value is higher than the nominal one, some generation capacity must be stopped, or the load has to increase. The secondary control is usually performed in an automatic way, by all the generators that participate to this regulation, through specific set point sent by a central controller. Figure shows an example of the first two levels of control after a frequency event in the system. The green line and the red dashed line show two different responses according to the inertia level of the system power systems with low generation produced by rotating machines will have low inertia level. Tertiary control, after secondary control is completed, the reserve margin used for this control shall be restored too and this is the purpose of the tertiary control or replacement reserve the last level of frequency control. In order to perform this restoring, the TSO calls send single producers even the ones not involved in the secondary control the operating prescriptions related to power variation for the generators already in operation and if needed asking startup generators not operating at that moment. This control level is not automatic, but it's executed upon request from the grid operator, and its remuneration follows the same rules of the secondary control.